Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. Perfect day, perfect day, perfect day. Well, greetings from none other than the Sin City, where after a really nice stay at the Hampton Inn Convention Center, I'll be trekking back home to Pittsburgh for the holidays and finally wrapping up my travels for the year that was 2020. Two flights east, this video being the first and longest aboard American Airlines' Boeing 777-200 in main cabin to Charlotte, North Carolina. American's check-in area is here in LAS's Terminal 1, along with Delta, Southwest, Allegiant, Avello, and Spirit. It honestly has to be one of my favorite check-in halls with the cool lighting throughout, wide open spaces, plenty of counters and kiosks, and a modern, renovated look. I am flying today with a carry-on and personal item, but no checked luggage, so everything is free for me. Got my boarding passes, and now, time to follow the signs for the D-Gates. Perfect day. Perfect day. Perfect day. Perfect day. So those said D-Gates, while part of Terminal 1, are also technically part of Terminal 3, which is why I'm currently on this people mover over to the satellite terminal. Let me explain. Harry Reid International Airport, yep, new name, when laid out looks like this. Terminal 1 is the one on the left, Terminal 3 on the right. AA's check-in desks are at Terminal 1, which leads directly into concourses A, B, and C, but the D-Gates are here this X midfield terminal connected to Terminal 1 by the Blue Line trams. The X is also connected to Terminal 3's E gates by the Red Line trams, bringing passengers from those airlines using Terminal 3. Meaning this D concourse is kinda a hybrid terminal. And that's my little diagram for you guys. Welcome to the D gates. <laughs> My ride up to North Carolina today just so happened to be arriving in as soon as I headed up the escalators. And 779AN, a 21 and a half year old 777-200 at the time of filming, first delivered to American in June of 1999. It'll be parking down at the end of the D1 to D14 jetty. Since I already had breakfast at my hotel and it's not quite lunchtime yet, perfect opportunity to buy some pretzels for the road, since American obviously won't be serving much on board. As I figured my gate area would be crowded, and turns out I was right, decided to stop at an empty gate along the way to eat and charge up my devices until I absolutely had to go down there. Vegas Airport sure tries hard to entice its passengers to spend just a bit more. Honestly, I wonder if anyone's ever won anything big here. I'm no gambler, so no problem here passing them up. Just a quick look around from these slot machines, and I've made it to my gate today, D14. Now, chances are you probably clicked on this video because of the thumbnail and the title, so let's board here and I will let you in on the secret of the American 777. Let's go. Thank you. Thanks. Um, 37A. A? Okay. Hmm, 37A. How can that be the best seat on the plane? And how can it be better than these first class seats up front here? Well, you shall see in a second. 
Speaking of first class though, on the 77200 across the country, there are 37 of these lie flat flagship business seats arranged one to one across two different cabins. I recently did a very detailed video on this class not long ago, so be sure to check it out. They're very nice, but today I'm going further back. Back past the next class called Premium Economy, made up of 24 recliner seats, 242 across, also past the 66 main cabin extra seats and most of the 146 main cabin seats until I reach mine, 37A. Now are you starting to see what I'm talking about here? The entirety of the economy and main cabin extra seats are all configured 343, but these last three rows due to the natural curvature of the 777's back is 242, allowing for a much better experience for the outward passengers, which is where I'll be today. On the seat back, it's just like everywhere else in economy. A personal TV monitor up top with a headphone jack and USB port below it, then a remote for the PTV with a keypad and game controller on it, a universal power outlet to the right of it, followed by the tray table, and finally the seat back pocket with the safety card, and at the time, the American Way magazine inside. The pocket itself is fairly roomy, large enough to fit most personal items. Legroom is not the greatest for six foot me and is like this throughout main cabin as well But where these seats do start to differ from the others is here the space in between your seat and the window It is literally like having your own personal storage area enough room for my personal item and probably most So it doesn't have to go under the seat in front also because it's two seats instead of three I'll have much easier aisle access, not having to bug two strangers. And the reason I say these are the best seats on the plane is because they don't cost any extra. Recline is standard for the 777 and can be lowered from the armrest as per usual. But believe me, if you pick these seats, you will not regret it. Putting the price, the comfiness, and the overall experience together, they are the best. Trust me. If you can get yourself on the right side of the plane, meaning that which glides by the strip, it is one hell of a takeoff. At this moment, I don't know, maybe it was just my jazz guy tingle, but I felt the flight attendants about to walk by. So it was time to open the tray table. Turns out my gut, or rather my eyeballs, were right, as FAs just handed out free earphones to the entire full plane. They will also come by shortly with a drink and snack service, but since it looks like I'm seeing something canyony below, 
Let's see what those views are like today. You can expect videos from there in the future. I guarantee it. One of the nice things about Americans' wide bodies is they usually have these PTVs, which have interactive flight maps. There are multiple different map options to view as we continue to glide over the Grand Canyon and places further east. And just like I said, the snacks have arrived. Now at the time, American was still handing them out in bags, which came with a small water bottle, a hand sanitizing wipe, and some Biscoff cookies. Other drinks were available on request, but they were not coming through the cabin with the full carts. In 2022, when this video is released, most things are back to normal on American with drinks, so this that you're seeing right now is a distant memory. Since it was just before Christmas when this was shot, decided to sit back and watch a Christmas carol. Our flight time over to Charlotte in total will be 3 hours 31 minutes as we pass over Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Tennessee, North Carolina, and South Carolina. So should have plenty of time to finish this movie. With Americans saying goodbye to their in-flight magazine in June of 2021, like the ghost of Christmas past, we now take a look back in time at this historical artifact. First up is the fleet list, which has been drastically scaled down compared to pre-COVID. Also in the magazine was AA's hub airport diagrams, their route maps, and a whole bunch of travel articles. After that flip, I decided to bother my seatmate and head back to one of the lavatories on board. There are eight in total, with two being here in the back on either side. Obviously, it's not as spacious and luxurious as the one up in flagship business, with this noticeably looking and feeling like an old economy lav, but it works. Back at my seat, I noticed two things. One, I guess the mood lighting only works on one side of the cabin, and two, Hey, somehow I ended up with a Coke. If you remember what I said earlier about drinks on request, I asked one of the flight attendants in the back after stepping out of the lab if I could have this delicious black drink, and she fulfilled my request. Since it looks like the daylight is waning and the best of the scenery has passed, probably a good time to check out the rest of what American offers on these monitors. Just scrolling first and foremost on the homepage to get the feel of the responsiveness, and while not as good as Delta's and JetBlue's newest touchscreens, these aren't half bad. If you are a kid or an adult that still considers themselves a kid, this section is for you. To find all the movies available though, tapping entertainment and then movies will do the trick. The screen can also be controlled by the remote's buttons, but I found my finger to be the best, better and faster option. A handful of TV shows is also available along with music playlists and games. 
Live TV was turned off due to COVID, but it has now since returned on American. Ending this IFE tour with, of course, the flight map as we glide over the heart of Tennessee. You lose. Okay, after a while, these lights on definitely started becoming pretty bothersome, especially since I walked up to the front and noticed the entire plane was dark, except for my specific aisle. Finally, one of the flight attendants got it working, revealing the full extent of what the mood lighting looks like on the 777-200, but it was short-lived. I should have probably mentioned this earlier, but Wi-Fi is also available. It's not free like the entertainment, and does cost a pretty penny, but it is there. After flight attendants walked through the cabin a final time, the Charlotte Metro lights came into view, and we began our set of turns, most of which occurred over South Carolina, to line up with Charlotte Douglas International Airport. Hopefully these cabin lights can stay off till we park. From the Sin City to the Queen City. Yeah, this light situation back here just never seemed to fix itself. They'll be back on again in three, two, one. Crap. Well, after a year where I could only travel domestically, meaning I flew through CLT probably the most, it's only fitting I finish my 2020 travels connecting here one more time. Given this 777 flight across the country was packed to capacity, and American's economy class is notorious for being among the worst in the US, my experience today I'd say exceeded my expectations. First off, flying a wide body will automatically raise the level of comfiness as the seats are slightly upgraded versus a narrow body due to them frequently going overseas, at least in normal times. The ability to have a whole collection of free entertainment available right in front of your face and the fact a USB and universal power outlet is at your disposal the entire flight really elevates the experience even more and if you want to have even more room for your stuff and yourself give one of those last three rows in main cabin a try and let me know what you think if any of you have sat back here before comment below your experience as well i'd like to know the only real negatives i had was obviously the lack of a proper snack drink service and the damn light but i enjoyed myself on american today Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Is that animal supposed to be a reindeer or a unicorn? I don't know, but it's pretty cool. One more video shot in 2020 coming right up next for you guys up to my hometown. Hope you guys enjoyed the domestic widebody flight today from Vegas to Charlotte. Thanks for watching and catch you on the next one.